Well, it's a couple of days later since you joined me last and uh, I found I was missing uh, a capacitor and the one that I actually needed was a 0.22 microfarad. So I went away and ordered some of them from RS and uh, got a few bags of them and uh, that's one that goes on one of these uh, PLL pins down here. So that's the last one. I've gone ahead and I think I've changed out all the others. Hopefully we haven't missed any. I can't see any that I've missed. Uh, yeah, just having another quick look. No, I think it's just, just this one on the PLL to do and then we're all finished. I also went around and uh, wherever I could find that horrible black goo, I've scraped all that off and give it a clean with IPA. So that should be uh, good to go now. So we'll just get out this little fella down here, this uh, point two, and um, we'll be done. So he said, one, two, three, and then straight up from pin three. So I'm guessing it's that one. And would it be that one? Looks like it is. And we'll just double check this on my uh, ESR meter and see how much capacitance we've got left. This uh, this capacitor is just too low anyway to be measured open circuit or low capacitance. So it looks like the LCR meter has no problem with measuring it. So that says capacitor C equals 261.5 nanofarad. And this one is 220 nanofarads. So uh, not a lot of difference in capacitance value, but the ESRs could be very different, couldn't they? And fingers crossed, we're now good to go. So as before, I've got the radio back on the bench and I think it's time for us to have a go at the alignment. I'm not sure how well I'm going to get on with this alignment because I've got the instruction manual here for the, uh, the Cobra 25. And uh, just like I said before, there seems to be about three different versions of the Cobra 25 manual and uh, this radio, this which is actually a Cobra 21 LTD, um, there seems to be again several versions of the alignment instructions for this. A lot of them are actually very very similar but there's also some difference in the, differences in them as well. So I guess um, when in doubt just uh, one plod on regardless but two um, you know think about what you're setting and if it doesn't look right then perhaps it isn't. So the alignment instructions have got a nice drawing here showing the setup that we need so we've got a power supply here which is going to be supplying our 13.8 volts and then I've actually highlighted in yellow the radio so the yellow blob there that's our radio so we put in 13.8 volts into it. We're also going to have a, a microphone or a, at least an audio input connected. We've also got the audio generator. We're measuring the voltage because we want to know how much audio we're putting into it. So uh, the audio generator and the AC voltmeter, they're going to be uh, built into my communications analyzer that I'm going to be using today. And today I will continue to use this uh, Stabilock, this uh, S1, sorry, SI4015, because I'm trying to force myself to use it. I think I've said before, I don't really like this communications monitor, but in theory it is probably a bit more modern and better than the old Marconi one that I do actually prefer using, but we're going to, I'm forcing myself to use it, so uh, there we go. So we've got the output from the radio, this is the RF output here, and they've got it going into a watt meter, and uh, out from the watt meter we're going to be measuring the modulation. We're going to have a look at the oscilloscope, and um, we're going to have a look at a distortion meter reading and we've got a frequency counter a frequency counter here and we've got a couple of other instruments there showing a spectrum analyzer and also showing an oscilloscope there well again my uh, my communications analyzer does have a spectrum analyzer built into it and it does also have an oscilloscope but 
you know, I'm, I'm not too uh, I'm not too thrilled about the uh, spectrum analyzer or the oscilloscope on the uh, communications monitor. It's it's good for a quick and dirty look, but I think we'll see a lot more, and it'll be a lot prettier if we plug in a real scope and uh, attach a real spectrum analyzer. So I think we'll do that today. And then here we've got our setup for receive. I'll just highlight where the radio is connected here in yellow. So again, we've got our power supply again, 13.8 volts input. And we're going to be injecting an RF signal into the uh, into the radio, into the antenna jack. And then we've got the audio output here, which it's showing going into an 8 ohm load. Like I said, I don't actually know what the loading is on the front of this um, stabby lock. I'm not sure. I don't think the 8 ohm loading probably makes much difference for what we're doing. Um, we've got an 8 ohm load. Then we've got a distortion meter, oh, and it's actually showing the cyanide meter, so we can uh, we can check some of these uh, things using the cyanide meter. And again, it's showing the output waveform, the audio output. We can also have a look at on an oscilloscope, so maybe we'll do that as well. And I've got a couple more bits of documentation here. I've just highlighted the uh, the alignment controls that we're going to be looking at today. So they're on this piece of paper. I think all the transmitter type alignments I've kind of highlighted in this ready pink. And then all the receive adjustments I've done in this green here. And again, just another visual aid here. I've, uh, I've marked on, uh, again, all the transmit stuff is in the red colour and the receiving green. And I've also marked on some of the radio test points here. Because we've got to hook up various instruments to do this alignment. So uh, they can be a little bit hard to find in the radio itself, especially for me if you're a bit of a new player. Um, so I've just highlighted it on here to make it a bit easier to find. So we are going to start off with a PLL alignment and it's probably worth saying that the PLL in this actual radio in the uh, in the 21, in the Cobra 21, is a different PLL to the one that's installed in the uh, Cobra um, 29. Or well, certainly it's a different uh, part number on the IC. So I did make a note of actually recording the voltage of the PLL voltage before I did anything just in case my instructions were wrong because the radio is working now I have recapped it but I've done a functional check and it is working so we are going to set it to what these alignment instructions are but if for some reason that the PLL starts to lose lock and it's not working properly we will set it back to the original uh, measurement which I took which I think was about 4.2 volts but it's actually asking us here to set it to 3.5 so what we've got to do here, it says we've got to we've got to have the radio set to transmit. Uh, we're going to measure what it calls a VCO voltage, and we do that with the radio set to channel 40. So we've got to connect a DC voltmeter to the junction of R59 and 60, and then we've got to adjust coil L15, L15 L15 to obtain approximately 3.5 volts on the meter. So that's step one. Let's go ahead and do that. We said we need channel 40. Right, that's 40. Got some volume there so we know it's working. So I'm also going to make the assumption because it doesn't say that we need to put the negative on the uh, ground connection of the radio. And we could probably get that from one of the uh, tuning cans. But we can also get it here from the, uh, the input connector. I'm just going to block your view out a sec, I can't, I'm working around the tripod. There we go. And I've also got to find L15, let me just go ahead and find that. And L15, it looks like that's this one, which is uh, nearest to the actual PLL chip. So we've got to key the radio and we've got to adjust it to 3.5 volts. Three point five one two. That's good enough, I'm sure. So two point two, item number two now. Connect the oscilloscope to junction point R six uh, stroke JP fourteen. Adjust L sixteen for maximum output on the oscilloscope. Well, I tried this before actually off camera, and uh, it did bugger all. And I don't know why, and I don't know what I did wrong. 
But really, I suppose what I should do is go back and have a look at the circuit diagrams to actually have a look at what that's doing. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to repeat the test. Uh, I'm sure one of you guys can tell me how to do this test properly or, uh, or what's going wrong. So let's have a go anyway. And I'm adjusting that L6 and as you can see it appears to do absolutely nothing. So I think I'm going to consider this adjustment of uh, coil L16 a bit of a fail. Something's gone a bit wrong there, don't know what. Um, leave it in the comments. So it skips us on now to these test 3.2 which is uh, it's going to actually look at the uh, I'm guessing the uh, the input to the uh, radio the audio input so it's asking us here to set up the signal generator the test set to to be on uh, well first of all I'm going to put the radio on channel 19 so back to channel 19 and we need an input of uh, 27.185 megahertz with 1 kilohertz and 30 percent modulation and a one millivolt output level that sounds like um, a huge output level I wonder if they actually meant one microvolt I'm not sure I'm not going to go with a one millivolt output level seriously there must be something wrong with that I'm sure it wouldn't be one millivolt um, noise blanker switches yeah blah blah I don't even know this has got them on those noise blanker switches has it no it hasn't even got them anyway so we uh, can ignore all that about the noise blanker switch because this radio doesn't have them so what we're going to do is we're just going to peak up the coils L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 um, to get the maximum output with the lowest distortion. So uh, let's do that. So right now I'm just going to disconnect our speaker and I'm going to uh, connect our test set to the audio output from the radio so that we can measure what's coming out of the speaker on the analyzer. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, the noise has shifted because now you can hear the uh, the received signal coming out of the uh, coming out of my test set now. So we need channel 19. There we go, 19. fully open so on the alignment instructions it says we need an RF output from the generator of 1 millivolt now I think that's actually wrong I suspect what it was actually should have said is it wanted an output level of 1 microvolt so I've gone ahead and I've set up the Stabilock to actually give an output of 0.5 microvolts and the reason that I've done that is because I suspect that the way that they're actually giving these voltage outputs I think when they say one microvolt, they're actually meaning one microvolt unterminated. So if you convert that to what they call a terminated, um, it's effectively about half. So I actually think that the correct level is 0.5 microvolts for this test. And uh, the reason they're going to choose such such a low input level is because they don't want any of the limiting circuit to operate in the radio. There's a massive advantage to using DBM in that if you see something written down in DBM you always know it's a reference to it doesn't necessarily mean 50 ohms it could be reference to 75 but as long as you know the system that you're dealing with whether it's 50 or 75 ohms you won't have any problems whereas when things are just listed in microvolts or PD you can get in a whole world of pain so according to the instructions now we're just going to be adjusting these cores L1, L2, 3, 4, 5 and I think it's six and seven wherever that is I think that's maybe six and is that one seven yeah that one seven there so we'll go ahead and we'll adjust them and I'm going to be basically just looking for the maximum signal on the uh, on the test set the maximum audio output from the radio so here we go starting with L1 
just shot past it there, didn't they? We call that done there. Right, now for L3. So at the moment we've an input level of uh, minus 112 dBm. We've managed to achieve 12 dB cyanide. So the next adjustment that we've got to look at is to set the S9 on the uh, signal strength meter. And again here it says set the level of the signal generator to 100 microvolts. Well to me 100 microvolts wouldn't be an S9. Um, it would actually be, um, what I would for an S9 I would actually set that to minus 73 dBm which is actually 50 microvolts. So it's that difference between there giving us unterminated uh, measurements here on the data sheet whereas I work with terminated. So rather than setting it to 100 we're going to set the generator to uh, to mine sorry to 50 microvolts or minus 73 dBm. I think to all intents and purposes that is already on S9 so we uh, we don't need to touch that. So here's VR1 which is the adjustment for the uh, signal strength meter there but I'm going to leave that now. So for these particular alignment instructions there is also another test which I missed which is the adjustment of this uh, noise blanker and uh, I've missed that off because one this radio hasn't actually got the noise blanker switch on it and two I actually haven't got a noise generator so uh, yeah, I've, I've skipped over that one completely. So that really completes everything for the uh, receiver alignment. Let's have a look at the, uh, the alignment of the uh, transmitter. And uh, there isn't so many adjustments on here, so let's uh, crack on and have a go at them. So looking at the alignment procedure for the transmitter, the first thing it wants us to do is look at a waveform on test point 4 which is resistor R46. So we've got to have the uh, we've got to have the radio set to transmit and uh, channel 19 which we've got it at. Hopefully you can see that on camera there's a resistor there and again it's got another bare leg on it to help identify it. So uh, these probes are times 10 probes. So that's done. So it looks like the next alignment we're going to do here is the uh, the transmit power. And we're going to do that on channel 19 again. And we have to connect an RF power meter, which we're going to use the Stabilock for. And we've got to adjust L18, L17 and L14 for maximum output. Which seems strange because we've actually just adjusted it there for maximum voltage. But we will do what it says. So we'll adjust them again for maximum output and then turn L10 down to obtain 4 watts on the RF meter reading. So let me just find them. So there's L18 which we adjusted before. There's L17 next to it. And finally L14 which is that one there. So I'm going to key the transmitter. I'm going to adjust these three here and uh, we're going to have a look at the output waveform. Ok so L18 I think is already peaked, let's try L17, ok that's peaked at 4.2 watts. Now L14, and I think L14 was already pretty well peaked as well. And the final part of the instruction is just to adjust the power back to 4 watts using L10. So I've got my tweaking tool into L10. I'm going to key the transmitter. And 
and I'm going to call that 4 watts, that's good enough. And the adjustment point for inductor L10, it's this one at the back here. So the next adjustment is this variable capacitor here, VC1, which is just kind of a padding capacitor for this crystal, so it'll just allow us to very slightly pull the crystal frequency. So with the radio set to transmit on channel 19, we're going to adjust VC1 and monitor the output on a frequency counter, and we're looking for the channel 19 frequency, which is 27.185 MHz. So previously I went ahead and I typed in 27.185 MHz and now what it's going to show us is the offset, so it's going to show us how far off frequency we are. So just key the transmitter and it's saying we're 0.07 kHz. 0.07 kHz is bugger all and we're not even going to bother trying to adjust for that because uh, it's pretty spot on. So we did the first part, we set up the pre-driver circuit, we set up the transmit power, the output power, We've set up the transmit frequency. Now the next thing it's actually asking us to do is to check the second harmonic on channel 19 and uh, adjust for a minimum using inductor L20. Well we're going to have a problem with that because uh, that's this one here and uh, I don't know if you can see inside that. We haven't actually got a core inside there. It's actually uh, it's missing. Let's see if I can put a bit more light on for you. Hopefully you can see inside here there is a there is a definite lack of uh, core in there and I think the fact that that's been pulled out that's one of the kind of power increase mods that people do because I, I seriously turned the power down on this radio when we actually started this was when we got the radio in first of all it was transmitting six and a half watts and uh, when I did a, the little bit of alignment previously before I, I recapped it I'm afraid I didn't show it you but I did actually turn it back down to from six watts back down to four watts and uh, following the recapping it looks like the alignment adjustments really haven't shifted very much at all but unfortunately uh, even if we do find a problem with the uh, with the second harmonic we're not going to be able to do anything about it because I don't have a core for this inductor and uh, I haven't got one in the junk box that will fit either but I think for shits and giggles let's have a look at it on the spectrum analyzer and see how bad or how good it actually is now of course one thing we absolutely cannot do is we cannot connect our transmitter our CB radio and uh, tra transmit directly into a spectrum analyzer because we'll just blow it up. So what I've got stuck in the corner here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, you maybe can't. We've got a quite a big through line, a ten tenu line attenuator, which is a 30 dB attenuator. I'm trying to feel, is there a... Yeah, so that's a 30 dB attenuator. And um, so we're reducing the power and then I've got another lead here which we're going to plug into the front of the uh, spectrum analyzer. So that's going to much reduce the power. Yeah, I'm afraid you boys are going to have to bear with me on the old Marconi's refresh rates. The old girl's doing her best. So let's, um, we've got the modulation turned on and uh, let's just key up the transmitter now. And there you can see, here's our, uh, here's our carrier and how, here's our two sidebands. And of course those two sidebands are resulting from the fact that we're actually modulating our... Uh, our carrier wave with AM. So we've got our upper side band there, we've got a, a lower side band there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just turn down the power of the modulation and you'll see them drop away. See that I've just turned the modulation down, I'm going to turn it back up again. Got that, got that set relatively high at uh, 20 millivolts now. But what we're actually looking for is uh, we need to actually zoom out in terms of frequency because it's asking us to actually look at anything on the, uh, the second harmonic. So this is our carrier wave here at 27.185 MHz and uh, twice the frequency at 54 MHz. Here's our second harmonic and you can see in terms of how big the peak is of that one and how big that one is that one is considerably bigger than that one, of course it should be. And uh, I've got uh, two markers set up, you can maybe just see a little bright dot at the top and a bright dot. Well I've got a delta set on the markers and that's showing that they're about, well it's flicking around between 54 and 
60 something uh, dBm in terms of a delta. Now what you always want is, you, you, you always say an approximate standard is that any harmonic should be at least 60 dB down on the carrier and um, we probably aren't far off that at the moment. It's saying 54 but I think maybe the marker's not dead set on the, the centre of there. So we're not a million miles off and of course what I want to do now is I'd like to uh, I'd like to set up that little output trap filter on the back of the radio which will actually help to reduce that second harmonic but as I said earlier unfortunately the uh, the L20 core is actually missing it's actually been removed because that's uh, that's one of the little power up mods that people do the tweakers do and I think the reason they do that is this peak will actually show up on a power meter because it is power being transmitted but your radio is being tuned over here somewhere to 27 megs so although that power will show up on a power meter it does nothing useful but if you go to one of these places that tweaks up your radio to maximum power you'll see that second harmonic there and you'll think that oh wow my radio is doing more power but half the power is being coming out in the second harmonic or in fact the third harmonic which will be down here somewhere off screen so um, I'd like to adjust that down, it says adjust that for minimum, I can't adjust it for minimum because the core is missing so it'll have to stay as it is until we can find the core. So with our radio set to channel 19 we did have a look at our second harmonic on 54 MHz but unfortunately we weren't able to do anything with it, we weren't able to adjust it to minimum because we're missing this core. So the next one we've got is to set the, uh, the transmit power indicator to uh, P4, I guess that's power level 4 on the meter. If we look at our signal strength meter, I can't actually see anything that has number 4 on it. So the SWR section has what looks like 1, 2, 3, and then there's an RF section under it which doesn't have any numbers at all. And then the very bottom scale here, it's got signal 1, 3, well the very bottom scale is obviously the uh, receive indicator, the signal strength, because that's got RS9 on it. So what do I actually set this to? As I said before, I, I'm not really a CB, I'm not sure what, what I should be setting it to. I'm kind of thinking I should probably set it to number 3, and then when I shout into the microphone maybe the modulation should go into the red. And uh, again, it's not going to really affect the function of the radio, but what, what should I be setting this to? I'm sure somebody out there knows, so perhaps you can, uh, you can give me a clue, give me a shout in the comments. What do I set this to? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set it so that um, when the microphone is keyed up, it's probably on the free level, and when we are talking to the microphone, it goes into the red. OK, I've inserted my twiddling stick, keyed the thing up and uh, the needle's on the 2 mark at the moment, if you can see that. Let's try and get that out of the way for you. That's at number 2, so I'm just going to turn that. I think that's at the number 3 marker now. And if I talk into the microphone it's going to go over here a little bit. Blah 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 blah. So is that right? I've got no idea. Tell me what I need to set that to please. So we're on to number six now which is a final adjustment which is just to set the uh, the modulation level and I've actually had a bit of a play at doing this and I'm having some problems here. Um, what I suspect that may have happened is we've already seen that somebody's removed the core from this radio, the one that's the uh, the second harmonic filter, that core was removed. I'm having problems in that when I actually adjust this VR5 pretty much from its uh, stop position I get from I go from like 70% almost immediately to 100% uh, modulation and not only that I can hear some like resonance within the radio I can hear it kind of I don't know it's difficult to describe I can hear I can hear it straining I can hear something which must be some kind of just over modulation effect so I'm going to just show you that and uh, I think what we'll also do is I don't necessarily completely trust the modulation meter on the analyzer so we'll also have a look at it on the scope what I suspect has happened is that this radio has maybe got the modulation limiter disabled or removed now I had a very quick look I haven't looked at the circuit in detail but I've had a look and from what I understand people normally remove a resistor or short circuit something or pull something out. I can't see anything missing, I can't see any links or bodge wires that shouldn't be there. Um, 
so I'm not sure what's happening so we might have to come back to it so this is the adjustment I was talking about this VR5 which is a modulation pot and I've pretty much got that turned right down now so that's the microphone gain turned fully down now so the switch on the front panel which is the uh, dynamite control I've got that turned fully down at the moment I'm going to turn that up to its maximum setting so at the moment there we go there's our 72 percent modulation now I'm going to try to adjust our modulation pot. So I'm going to turn it, try to turn it up just a little bit. And just more or less touching it puts it to 100%. And you can hear the tone, you can hear from the analyzer here that, well, that's a square wave. I can tell without putting it on a scope, but I'm getting a square wave audio response there, it just sounds horrible. It just jumps from 70 to pretty much to 100. There's just no adjustment there whatsoever. So I'm suspecting something wrong with the mod limiter. Let's have a look at that on the oscilloscope. So I've plugged the uh, output from the uh, CB radio, the transmitter output, I've plugged that into our uh, attenuator and then that's going to go into our scope up here. So this is the adjustment here, this VR5, and I've actually got this, well it's actually it is turned down to its minimum level now. And as soon as I start to increase it off its stop, you can see that we get into the old uh, box car. So, uh, yeah, far too much modulation there. So there's something not quite right with the modulation circuit on this circuit, whether it's a limiter or, well, I'm guessing it probably will be the limiter, but I'm not exactly sure. So have we got a faulty component? Um, have we got somebody who's done a, some kind of power up mod, which is what I suspect, although I can't see anything missing. Well, I've got to admit, I'm not sure what's going on with that modulation circuit, but in fairness, I've not even had a look at the circuit diagram yet. I've just checked the obvious things like, is there any components? Does it look like there's anything missing? Is there anything shorted out? Is there any bodge wires? Certainly can't see any of them. Um, so maybe we'll have to go dig in a little bit further. But I've also got to say, being somebody who doesn't really work on CB radios, um, I think what I'm seeing is definitely wrong. But uh, I'm, I'm not dead sure. I'm really suspecting that somebody's been in there and they've uh, somehow strapped out the limiter. So without getting the circuit diagrams out, I think for today I'm going to call it a day because this video is already far too long and I'll also be interested to see what you guys come back with. No doubt some of you have seen this before and they've to give me some hints and tips and tricks of what to look at next. So until next time, as always, thanks very much for watching but until then, that'll do. Bye for now.